In an earlier video, I showed data that there's an increased incidence of E. coli bloodstream infections during aging. Well, E. coli isn't the only microbe that increases during aging. Other microbes increase in the blood during aging too. And one of these is candida. So uh, during aging, there's an 11 to 12 fold increased incidence of candida bloodstream infections during aging. So let's have a look at the data. So here we see the number of cases of candida bloodstream infections uh, by year. So in 2000 and 2001, 2002, all the way through uh, 2005. And the number of candida cases broken down by age group. So first, in looking at the youngest age group, 18 to 44 years, we can see that there's a, a 1.4 to 2.3 uh, cases of candida bloodstream infections in the youngest age group. Now, that increases during aging. So for the 45 to 64 uh, year age group, we can see that there are 4.5 to 6.8 cases of candida bloodstream infections with candida per 100,000 population. And that's a threefold increase, which only increases further into the 80, uh, 65 to 84 year age group, uh, where we can see a, a range of 12.5 to 18.6 cases of bloodstream infections with candida fungi per 100,000 population, which is a eight to nine fold increase relative to the youngest age group. And then in looking at the oldest age group, uh, older than 85 years, we can see that there are 17.3 to 25 cases per 100,000 population of candida bloodstream infections uh, for that age group, which is an 11 to 12 fold increase relative to the youngest group. So what's the significance of this age related increase uh, in increased incidence for candida fungi in the blood. Well, microbes in the blood, potentially microbes in the brain. And in this case, uh, candida albicans, uh, uh, a species of candida, is found in various brain regions in an Alzheimer's disease patient. So in looking at uh, sections of different regions of the brain, in this case, the uh, external frontal cortex, the cerebellar hi hippocampus, and the entorhinal uh, cortex slash hippocampus, and I've highlighted those regions of, of the brain there, um, we can see that there are candida albicans fungi in the brain. So blue stains DAPI, which uh, recognizes nuclei. Uh, red is uh, an antibody that recognizes human neurofilament. And wherever you see green are, are candida albicans. These, uh, the green are antibodies that recognize and bind to uh, candida albicans. And again, these are in brain sections. So uh, just to highlight, you can see the green there, as I've highlighted by the uh, yellow, yellow stars. Uh, and then in the uh, cerebellar hippocampus, the lots of green there, and then even more green in the third slice. So uh, candida albicans is found in the brain of Alzheimer's disease, or at least one Alzheimer's disease patient. So data for one is good, but more data is generally better. So here we're looking at brain sections of the uh, entorhinal uh, cortex for 10 different Alzheimer's disease patients. So in this case, again, blue stains da uh, DAPI uh, nuclei, red is an antibody that recognizes alpha tubulin, and green are antibodies that recognize uh, candida albicans. So wherever you see green, there is fungi. Whenever you see, wherever you see yellow, there's also fungi because red plus green equals yellow. So green or yellow, we've got fungi in the brain. So just to highlight in each of these patients, because each section uh, here is data for a different Alzheimer's disease patient. So we've got uh, candida there, there, uh, and just to go through them all. So you can see the green or yellow in each of these uh, Alzheimer's disease patients, fungi in the brain. Now, it isn't just candida albicans that's been found in the brains of Alzheimer's disease patients. Other candida species have been found in the brain too. In this case, candida glabrata. So uh, again, green recognizes, uh, uh, is an antibody that recognizes candida glabrata. So wherever you see green or red, which in this case is stained for alpha tubulin, uh, uh, sorry, yellow, uh, green plus red equals yellow. So wherever you see green or yellow, we've got uh, candida glabrata in the brain. So I've highlighted that each of these subjects, Alzheimer's disease patients, have uh, either green or yellow, indicating they've got candida species, uh, in this case, glabrata, in the brain. So what about the control subjects? Do they have uh, candida in the brain? So we're looking at uh, sections of the entorhinal cortex. And again, green is the antibody that would recognize candida glabrata. Uh, so wherever there would be green or yellow, because red plus green equals yellow, we would have uh, candida in the brain. And as you can see from each of the 10 control subjects, data for 10 control subjects uh, for brain sections here, there's no green and there's no yellow. So uh, for whatever reason, uh, candida is in the brain of Alzheimer's disease patients. And I'd argue that based on the age-related increase for can candida in the blood, that may be one potential explanation. 
Uh, so that's not the only study that's found fungi in the, in the brains of Alzheimer's disease patients. And I've uh, listed just two papers here in case anyone's interested in checking that out. So rapamycin to the rescue, uh, and why would that be? So here we're looking at in vitro uh, data for the ability of rapamycin to kill fungi. Uh, rap rapamycin is a well-known antifungal, but let's have a look at some of that data. So on the first plate to the left, that's a plate that does not have rapamycin. So uh, in only focusing on the wild type, this is uh, normal candida albicans. Uh, the other, the other uh, parts of this plate are, are, have uh, various candida albicans mutants. I'm not gonna get into that data. I'm more concerned with the effect of rapamycin on uh, the normal, uh, the full genotype, normal wild type candida albicans. So what's the effect of rap rapamycin on candida albicans? Well, we can see that in the next box here. So when you add rapamycin to that dish that had a candida in the right corner, in the presence of rapamycin, there is no uh, candida albicans growth, completely eliminates it. So in vitro data is nice in cells, but what about in animals? So here in this study, uh, the, uh, they gave uh, injections of candida albicans to mice. So it's in the blood when you inject it. And uh, without rapamycin, we can see the dose of zero, survival zero. So no rapamycin, IV injection of candida albicans kills all the mice. So what happens with increasing doses of rapamycin? Well, survival increases, and it increases to the point where the 20 milligrams per kilogram dose of rapamycin for mice that are uh, IV injected with candida albicans, there's 100% survival. So rapamycin protects against uh, candida in the blood. And when considering the in vitro data, uh, in vitro data where it uh, completely eliminates growth of candida albicans, one could argue that it improves survival by basically eradicating the candida that was IV injected. So from this, we can conclude that rapamycin is a potent antifungal against candida, candida albicans. Now, if you remember the earlier slides, I showed not just candida albicans fungi in the brain, but candida glabrata, a different species of candida that was also found in the brains of Alzheimer's disease patients. How does rapamycin do against that? So here we're looking at that data. So first, uh, this is uh, candida glabrata growth in the presence or absence of rapamycin. So first, no rapamycin. You can see rapamycin on the x-axis in micrograms per mil. Uh, so when there is zero rapamycin added, uh, there is full growth of candida glabrata. Uh, but as the rapamycin concentration uh, increases, in this case from 5 micrograms per mil to 10 micrograms per mil, uh, a candida glabrata growth is uh, uh, reduced, maximally reduced. In this case, there's a four to six-fold reduction for candida glabrata as rapamycin levels are increased. So when considering all of these data, uh, one would hope that there are randomized controlled trials, RCTs, that use rapamycin to prevent or slow Alzheimer's disease progression. And as far as I could see and I looked, there were no studies that have done that yet. Uh, now, uh, there is one early phase RCT uh, that's using rapamycin treatment in Alzheimer's disease patients, but this uh, study just started recruiting uh, a couple months ago, June 2020. So ho let's hope for positive data uh, for that going forward. All right, uh, that's all I've got for now. You can find me lots of places on, online. Have a great day.